day two of design in the age of experience. Uh, yesterday, we had an interesting topic, which is how uh, design correlates with matter, materials. Today, it's about the correlation between design and the human. So you're here in the pavilion hosted by Dassault System, the 3D experience company. I always like to recall what is our mission, for those of you who don't know. It's to provide, in fact, to uh, customers, to people, uh, 3D universes, virtual universes, in order to be able to deliver compelling experiences to uh, the human beings. So this is our, our uh, motto. I'm Philippe Lofer. I'm the CEO of one of the brands that makes the 3D experience company called Katia, uh, which was born in 1981. So as I mentioned to you, the um, topic today is human in a large sense. And we're going to speak about sensitive topics, artificial intelligence, for example. Uh, does it make us less human or does it make us more human than ever? And um, we're going to discuss the relationship between design as a process, as a business, and the human experience. Uh, we consider our interactions with uh, machines and question the change um, it brings to the human species, uh, especially when we are moving towards uh, customized experiences. All of you are using today customized experiences. So how do they born in the brain of the engineers, the designers? That's what we are going to talk about. We also believe in Dassault System there is a strong push now in all the industry domain. We call it industry renaissance. And uh, we are going to discuss the empowerment of young talents, young uh, engineers, young designers like you, Thank you. who will uh, champion the design in all the industries. So this morning, the first design story is about mobility. And it's a practical example and a, a relevant example on how to rethink the relation between the human and the technology to make it more comfortable, more human. So I'm very honored and pleased to Thank welcome you. Lambert, Lambert Tréno Trénora. Uh, you are the CEO and the CTO, co-founder yeah. of Girolift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to explain us the, the company. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little example in the back for those of you who yeah. uh, want to come and visit you after this session. So you want to promote what we call inclusive mobility. Yes. You will explain us that. And develop mobility devices uh, for both valid and reduced mobility users. This is, I think, a particularity of what you're uh, doing. Yes. And you want to remove uh, from the social aspect the stigmatization um, caused by the medical device. Yes, it is. So Girolift, just in brief, is a startup. Uh, that has benefited from our um, program called the 3D Experience Lab. So 3D Experience Lab provides an environment for startups to uh, create those virtual universes, to create virtual experiences even before the actual product or the actual experience exists. And so you have been, uh, we're going to discuss that at the end of our presentation. Voilà, so it's a really a perfect example of the difference between deliver a product versus deliver an experience. And to deliver an experience, you need to understand uh, the human sense of it, who mm -hmm. you want to address. Yes. So Lambert, Let it's your, your turn to explain us what is Girolift. Yes. Uh, like you told, we're going to speak about inclusive mobility. And uh, I will start to speak about mobility. Because for a lot of persons, mobility looks like this, like scooters, like overboard, one wheels. But for a large part of the population, mobility look more like this or like this. And it's real. I've seen it on a, on a fair. So um, with Geolift, we uh, start about it. And we part of the constat that the mobility solution for persons with reduced mobility haven't changed since like 100 years ago. You can see here a picture of a wheelchair after the first World War and a wheelchair that you can buy now. And they haven't changed a lot. And it's worse than this, because on the mind of a lot of persons, the wheelchair will not change anymore. You have a picture of the movie Avatar. I think 
anyone have seen it. And they have in, uh, invent like a civilization, they have invent a language, a culture, but the user, uh, the, the main character, exit from a, sp a spaceship with a wheelchair that you can buy now. They haven't changed even this. But we're going to speak about inclusivity also. There is a lot of solutions that we use, all of us, commonly. And at the, at the start, was developed for handicapped users, like the SMS, like the vibrator. It was developed for blind people. And uh, even the mirror on the, in the elevator was developed for uh, user, wheelchair users to exit from the elevator. So we start GeoLift project with this constat, and, and we say, OK, there is like 75 million users of wheelchair in the world, and why we cannot do the same thing for them? Because the wheelchair is like not adapted, not suitable for um, environment used in the city, in uh, rural aspects, everywhere, and even not suitable for the user. Uh, for example, the verticalization has many advantages, like physiologically, bone consolidation, blood circulation, but even psychologically, be at the same size of person when you speak with them, or um, autonomy. And based on this constat, we say, OK, we will develop a product for anyone, develop an inclusive mobility solution with a modern design. Uh, and this solution allows the user to reduce the stigma of the handicap, the stigma of the wheelchair, and develop a solution for everyone. So we have developed GeoLift. It's a module that we plug on any type of personal transporter, like Segway. And it allows the user to move as well sit as standing with a self-balance control and a verticalization and, like I told you, a modern design. I can show you like a short video. This is a, an elevator, non adapt elevator. We can go in, make a round, and exit without any issues. And there is verticalization. This, one, this is uh, the previous prototype. You can see on the booth uh, the new one. So it's like. Like you see, a two-wheel solution. Um, you can pass like a sidewalk. You can uh, have 20 kilometers per hour velocity. It's very, very compact, very manual. Like a short view of the uh, the, the main competition. Um, there is, of course, uh, wheelchairs, scooters, electric or manual wheelchairs, verticalization wheelchair, but not allows the user to move verticalized. And there is some of them who developed a um, wheelchair based on a personal transporter, but without integrate verticalization. And the start of the project is for who? For which type of population we will make it? And the first idea was to allow users to um, um, have access to job, um, have access to a social and a professional environment, but also for uh, day living environment, to have access to museum, to have access to mall, and for valid users also reduce the penibility in some job access. So GeoRiff now, it's like seven years of R&D development, and uh, we are close to the commercialization. We're finishing yet the industrialization for commercialization this summer. And uh, we have started the pre-sales, and we will start the sales at summer. Thank you. Thank you, Lambert. Uh, I think you forgot to tell that uh, the design is cool. Yeah, <laughs> I tried uh, it. You can see it in the, in the back of this room. So uh, please try it, because uh, it, uh, it brings some emotion, I think, and some, yeah. let's say, some um, cool experiences. Mm. So uh, you mentioned how the company was born, GiroLift. Um, you need to know that when um, we speak about what is called experience thinking, 
-hmm. There are three questions that you should ask yourself. Who you are targeting, who is the audience that you are targeting with the experience, mm -hmm. it's very important. The second one is the what. It's what value you want to deliver, what are the compelling values you want to deliver. And the third one is the how. How are you going to deliver the experience? So my first question would be about the who, and the topic I want to open maybe is um, inclusive uh, design mm -hmm. and the social aspect of uh, inclusive design. Yes. So I think you told me in our past interviews that GiroLift was created around this inclusivity. Maybe you can tell us how the idea started, you know, and mm -hmm. I think what is striking is you had this inclusivity in mind since uh, day zero. Yes, yes, yes. At the start, it's my partner who um, is the CEO of an association for reduced mobility user. His son is on a wheelchair. And um, one day he tried a segue and he says, like, why we cannot develop a solution based on this uh, mobility solution, but for everyone. And of course, in his mind, it was for his son, but, but for everyone, because it's cool, is mainstream, and when you are on it, even if you have like a, a, a legs problem, we don't see the handicap. So he says, okay, we will develop a solution that um, allows anyone to use this device. Very good, so uh, that means that uh, um, this inclusivity, this idea was at the very start. And yes. um, uh, it's right to say when, when you will see people moving on that and compared to a, a traditional gyro lift, there is not much difference between those two people. So yes. it allows disabled people to, let's say, be inserted and look like if they, are, yeah. they were like you it, and me. It's arrived, it's arrived sometimes. I like move with this device on the street in Belize, for example, and person stop me and says, yeah, it's cool, your device, what it is, I can buy it, and it's valid users, and they don't see the handicap, and um, one time, I, um, I'm, I was on, on a mall, and I was stopped by security guards, and he told me, like, uh, sorry, man, but what it is, and I say, yeah, it's my wheelchair, and I say, oh, sorry, I didn't see it, and it's typically what we're trying to do with inclusive mobility. Uh, do you have feedback, by the way, from people who tried it? You know what they feel, what they what they sense about, you know? Yeah, they, um, we make it try by reduced mobility users, and they are like uh, a sense of freedom. They can do new stuff. The sense of being look like another one, not not the handicap, but uh, a valid person, and it's like basically what we have done in JavaLift. So they confirm uh, about you know the fact that they feel better and that they are included in the society. Yeah, it is. We we develop it with them. We develop it with um, occupational therapists. We develop it with association and user and user. It's the base of the Geolib development, and I think it's the base of each design. In inclusive design, it's more than this. But design, you need to to develop with the end users to understand properly what they're looking for. So continuing in the, on the theme of inclusive design, now there is a question about uh, the how, how do, to develop you know, uh, along the inclusive design paradigm. Um, we traditionally consider that there is a sort of rift between the designers, the human, and the technology. Uh, I'm the first one who witnessed that because we are delivering software at the end to users and mm -hmm. their interaction with the software um, is, I would say, um, very cautious. Mm. Um, we have introduced in our latest software what, is what we call Cobots. Mm. Cobots is the fact to not only you input ideas to the computer, but the computer given you ideas. Mm. That's called artificial intelligence. Yes. So, and I see a lot of reluctance on some people to adopt that, some mm. designers, because they said, no, I have the idea, the computer cannot help me. Mm. So uh, I wanted to maybe uh, start the, the, the discussion, the question about the human-machine relationship um, and how you have designed your user experience, you know, the mm. interaction with the machine. Does it, in your sense, uh, offer better collaboration between the machine and the human, or does it uh, even uh, create an additional shift between both? Yes. It 
it was the, the, the first step, the, the first important step. It's the conception between human and uh, the, div the device. Because the user is set on it 24-7. So we need to, to adapt it properly and not made it like we think it should made. We develop it with um, end users, occupational therapists, to take it in account every details, like the the height of the seat, the importance of the of the seat, the importance of the where is the um, the interface, where is everything, the handlebar, how we will make the transfer, all this stuff should be introduced at the start oh. from day one. Okay, so a question that I did not uh, uh, plan to ask, but what about the material? Uh, did you uh, did you think about the comfort about you know when when people are sitting and when they are yeah. uh, standing? Yeah, yeah, this like each like the tissue, everything should be uh, think for them with uh, um, for memories, this kind of stuff um, to improve their, their use, improve the interface between the, the device, the robots, and the, the, the human. It's not something that you can develop and say, OK, we'll, um, the Do user will adapt it. No, the robot should adapt. Uh, we should adapt the robot for the user. And it's like but the inverse. It's not like you broke the, the game and bring something and says, OK, we'll find a, a target. No, we should adapt the robot to the target. And it's like a different way to think the design and the, dev and the, the development. We'll discuss that later. Maybe the robot itself or the machine should adapt itself yes. intelligently to the human it's, uh, it's driving. Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on... on so that's the next question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, you said that you need, in the very beginning of the design process, to think about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe, of course, in the industrial system, that our solution provides you the virtual world in order to understand in advance how the reaction of the human being will be. So what is... Um, I know you've been using Katia, one of you know, <laughs> the, the brand and the brand I'm, I'm conducting to shape the world we live in. Uh, what is your uh, feedback on uh, using the system solution, so those virtual universes, and uh, if you, we have time, uh, you as a Katia user, your interaction with the software, you know, a human yeah. and a machine. So two questions. Okay, <laughs> two in one. Uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, um, it, it was the first step going on Katia. We developed everything since day one on Katia on everything like like part design, assembly design, kinematics, dynamics, evaluation, meshing, everything we have done on Katia. And um, it was very interesting to, to develop it and easily move each part after each uh, discussion with the end user. To modify each, them. Yeah, it was very easy. It was very easy to... Um, to adapt it, like I think Katia is, was was the, for me was the best. I've always used Katia, so I'm probably not fair, but <laughs> Katia is, it was the best solution for develop this because you can adapt, uh, give like uh, um, the best answers to the user and show her and return, integrate the returns. It's, yeah, so that's a very important. quick way to to converge on your. Uh, First prototype, I guess. Yeah, from the first prototype, we develop it on Katia. For the audience, you need to know that sometimes the motto of Katia is, uh, with Katia, you can do everything except babies. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, except that we have uh, one of our latest customer is Procter & Gamble, and the diapers are designed with it because you need to simulate in advance, you know, mm. how the comfort of the diaper will be. Yeah. Are there going to be any leaks? So the same software is used, I would say, for diapers and for rockets for the Boeing, you know, that yeah. you're flying in. And I'm very pleased to see that you have used it as well for the... Yeah, for even, this, for even the our partners working on Katia, the partners uh, will make the, the seat, the back, rest, everything, develop on Katia, and they make this type of evaluation on this. No, that's why we, we develop the complete system and evaluate each part of the system on Katia. On and the diapers is a very good example because it's quite the same for, for the, the seat of the gyro lift. 
By the way, you'll be able, there is uh, the actual prototype here, the yeah. version, I don't know, version? Pre-industrial version. Pre-industrial version. Yeah. And then you'll be able to go on the screen and interact with it in the virtual world. Yeah. Uh, at this point of time, maybe, are there some questions in the, in the room that you would like to ask or reaction? Um, if not, you know I have plenty. I can continue. <laughs> uh, tell us. Yes. Come, want to come on stage with us? Oh. No. <laughs> Why I'll join you. Uh, I'm just curious. Love the product and uh, the thoughtfulness that you put into the, the user experience. I'm just curious how you're tackling the stigma and through your your sales and distribution. Like, what is what is the the sales of the the Jiro Lift program yeah. look like? Um, at, from starting, we will start with a B2B market to allow the company to reinforce job access, so uh, inclusivity in job access. And um, on the second step, we will start a B2B2C market uh, to sell it to distributors, medi uh, fin, uh, medical device distributor. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Lambert, yeah. I uh, really appreciate this focus on uh, exclusivity, which of course is key in, in. in the design process to start with maybe extreme uses and then scale back and find out that all of us make good use of text messages, for instance, um, and all those uh, technologies. What do, you, what do you think about, um, I mean, could, could you tell us a bit more about the real issues with the seated position and, and the mm. current wheelchairs that one has to maneuver with their hands, for instance. You talked about the fact that being seated all the time is really not good. Yeah. But us, as people who may not have this problem or don't know people with pro problem like that, for us, we, uh, we're just so ignorant of that, we can't even put our shoes mm. uh, in their shoes. And it's, of course, very important in design to be able to project yourself in the other people's needs and be a, have yeah. this empathy. Can you just give us that uh, more hints uh, about their li the, what it is to yeah. be seated all the time? So the verticalization has many advantages. Uh, physiologically, it's like reduced bed sores, uh, blood consolidation, uh, bones consolidation, blood circulation, uh, transit, but also psychologically. Uh, when you speak with someone, be at the same size, not look like like uh, a person like from back. Uh, there is also autonomy, have access to objects here, for example, even if like the platform is not accessible, but you come here and you, you the table is there, so it's not uh, uh, accessible. Um, there is issues with a manual wheelchair. Because if you use it all the time, you have problem with your shoulder after. And there is a, um, an image problem. Uh, the, the, the fact that you see the wheelchair and the uh, handicap users want to have the most, um, uh, the device the most uh, blind possible. So, so they use a device sometimes that not um, acceptable for their pathology, because like this they don't see uh, the handicap. Uh, to give you like for smile, but it's not not really funny. But for smile, I have worked on um, on a hospital previously, and uh, I worked with a person who was paraplegic, and all the day he was. Uh, like crossing the the, the handicap uh, fan, the um, hospital room, and pass in front of the the room of a person who was like uh, tetraplegic, and he, he, each day he was there at the hospital. He says hi, the handicap, to this person because for him this one this one was worse than him. Like this, it was his way to like be blind on his own uh, pathology. And it's the same for anyone. And for him, valid users see the handicap. So he wants to break with it. So the inclusivity is also to give to everyone the same device like this. Everyone, we won't see the, the handicap. We won't see the difference. I hope I answered your question. 
maybe to close, um, I died to, I'm dying to ask you the question, what is after that? You are in pre-industrialization phase and mm -hmm. in uh, nearly commercialization phase. Yes. You explained us that. Do you have ideas what's next? You know, we're speaking about robots, autonomous. Will it become autonomous one day? Yeah, <laughs> we're working on it, but the um, driving his own wheelchair, driving his G-Rift, is a pleasure for this person. He has uh, lost freedom, so this is one of his last freedom to drive it. So we want to uh, put smartness on it, um, uh, avoid uh, accidents, something like that, and we want to uh, increase the accessibility uh, to allow, for example, tetraplegics, to use this one. For now, it's not possible because they cannot control their center of mass, but a uh, new solution to allow them to use it. This kind of stuff, it will be starting now. And you talked to me also about uh, future user interface, not manipulating it yeah. anymore the same way. Yeah, yeah. Th this is the solution for uh, inclusive, uh, for make this GeoLift more inclusive. We're working on on control the gyro lift with uh, joysticks, with the brain interface, this kind of solution. Voilà, thank you, uh, thank, thank you, Lambert. You. Thank, thank you, you, everyone, for have, uh, attending uh, this session. Thank you, Lambert, again. Thank you very much.